hey guys so in this lecture we'll develop a very simple application using mvvm pattern now i have explained you uh, i notify property change interface uh, concepts the concept of commands etc in my previous lecture so we'll be using those concepts into this application now in this application i will be also using a concept called as observable collection so i wanted to make that lecture of observable collection before this uh, presentation but uh, due to it's a very small topic and it's very easy topic to understand so i will be using that concept directly in this demo and you need to understand and i will make you understand rather uh, that how do uh, what is the purpose of this observable collection okay so i have that application running into my uh, system so i have already developed that application so i will show you that what will we will be trying to achieve through this application uh, demo and then we will build it from scratch so here it is it's a very simple application it has a label first name last name two text boxes a submit button and a list view so you can see this submit button is not enabled right so the moment i type a name in here john do and lose the focus of this text box so this button gets enabled and if i submit this it gets added to this list view if I change the name, say I say Mary Watson, it, it gets added into the list view. If I remove this thing, you can see the button gets disabled, right? So there need uh, needs to be some input into these text boxes. So let's see how we will achieve this, and let's build this application from scratch using MVVM pattern. So I have opened a empty WPF application and I have named this uh, project as MVVM practical, right? So first thing what we need to do is to add a folder, which is called as model. So let me first develop the model and to this model folder, I will add a class. So, and I will make this class as person class, right? So this person class consists of my model. So I will have public class person and I have two properties. So it will have string F name. So F name stands for first name and the capital F name has the is the property and this is the variable. Now to same, uh, save some time, I will be pasting some codes. So let's paste on the other two properties what we need to in this application. So let me paste those two properties in here. So I have two more properties now, just like my first name, there is a last name property and then there is full name property. Okay. And all this full name property does is it concatenates first name and last name. That's it. And it returns full name. So if you have watched my inotify property change demo so you need to implement this interface inotify property change and for that i need to have the namespace in imported so that namespace is component model namespace and then you need to implement this interface so the moment you implement this interface you get a property change event handler so let me have that property change event handler inside this and then I will have a own property change method defined so I have explained this method in my previous demo of inotary property change interface so I'm just pasting it so it's a method which takes a string parameter that that means it will take a string of property name and all this logic here is does it first checks that uh, whether this property change event handler is null or not and if it's not null then it raises the event so very simple method here so here i will write on property changed and then i will pass the property name here so what's my property name it is f name right similarly i will have the same here okay so since full name is not written it's it, it does not need to notify the ui so I, i'm not writing this method in the full name property 
let's save this so our model is ready so let me collapse this model now now let's add our view model so let me add a folder and name it as view model okay let me have a class inside it so the naming convention goes like this so if you have a student class or uh, person class so the name of the view model should be person view model so let me name it as person view model let me add this class right so here is our view model so let me make this class as public and let's implement again i notify property chain interface so let me have i notify property chain interface in implemented again it's present in component model and let's implement this interface now you might be getting a question in your mind that why we need to implement i notify property chain and interface again onto the view model that's because we will be going to define a collection class in our view model that will again notify to the ui and the the sole purpose of i notify property chain interface is to notify the ui or provide the chain notification onto the ui so it depends on your requirements that what you need to achieve so in my case i need to uh, propagate those changes from view model also to the ui so similarly we will have a notify property chain interface method defined which takes a property name and the same logic what i explained you for this method right so now i need to expose a property from the model to the view model so that this property can in turn communicate to the view so if you remember the architecture of mvm pattern model and the view don't talk to each other directly right it's the responsibility of the view model to make them talk so what i will do i will make a property of this model type or the student type so that that property will take all my data and present it to the view right so let me have a prop full so it's it's of type what's the name of my class person class right and you can see i have used this mvm practical dot model name space because my person class is present onto the model name space right so i will name this variable as underscore person so this is person and i will name this as person so this person is the property now of type person class okay and also i have this notify property change uh, method so i will pass this property name onto this notify property chain interface uh, property chain method so this is the reason why i need to implement i notify property chain interface because my data from the model also needs to be passed through view model and reach to the ui so that's why we need to expose a property of type person or present in the model class and then we need to define this i notify property chain interface and propagate our change requests so let me make it as string variable because it's giving me error and now you might have seen that in my application what uh, i showed you what was running onto my screen that in uh, that had a list view so in this list view you need to return a list so that uh, in that list view my uh, name of the person will be added one by one right so you need some mechanism to add th that list onto that list view right so for that in normal scenarios what you need to uh, what you did was like this right so you had a list of person class right so you do it like this persons and then you created a property type of this person class or the list of this person class right so this is the normal mechanism what you followed in your uh, applications without wpf right now WPF has a very special type of collection included in it that is called observable collection. So the purpose of the observable collection is very similar to the purpose of this I notify property chain interface. So the moment your property value changes on in on to this I notify property chain interface, it notifies the UI. Same is uh, same functionality is done with the help of observable collection also. So the moment anything will be added to this uh, collection, it will be propagated onto the UI and similarly when anything will be removed from this uh, collection this will be this will be propagated to the ui so the chain notification 
uh, runs back and forth with the help of observable collection so to use observable collection it's very easy it's used just like as this list only thing is that we need to have this observable collection defined in here right now you can see it says that uh, it is fine in the system dot collections dot object model so i need to imp uh, import this namespace also so same thing you need to do it here and you can see now your error has gone away and now you will be storing all your persons the list of person into this observable collection class and the moment any person will be added onto that list this will be notified to the ui the moment the any person will be removed from this list it will be notified to the ui so this 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 observable collection is used in wpf mvm patterns explicitly now uh, we are we are done with our view model till now we need to define a few commands also in here but uh, for, for that first we need to have our view ready so let me add this view here so let me add a folder so this called as view so if you have i have just one view so i will be making that view onto this main window if you have many views so you need you can add uh, these windows in here and de define your application so let me have my main window defined inside this view right and let me go to this main window now and let's design our ui first let's let's define namespace of our view of view model so that uh, my view is aware of this view model remember i am not defining any namespace from my model class that's because view is never uh, aware of this model class let me name this as vm uh, let's let me have the name of my application so this is the name this is the namespace what i need to implement for this uh, view to be aware of my view model now we need to define window dot resources so that i can reference this namespace so the name of my namespace is vm and it see it's a referencing person view model so what's the name of my view model it's person view model let me give it a key yes person view model so person view model now this key is different and this namespace is different but i have uh, i have made their name same just because you can easily confuse between these two so you need to understand that whenever you pass person view model you are passing that key now to save some time i have paste i will paste a code in here so that will define my ui so this is a very simple code so if you need to understand these all things the layouting part you need to go and check out my layouting video of wpf so i've just uh, made five rows of this uh, grid in this grid so you can see these lines these are five rows in here and then there are two columns so you can see this is one column and this is second column okay and then uh, i have defined a text block which says first name and then it has a corresponding text box i am binding that person dot f name that means my property which is defined in onto the model onto this text box okay and the binding mode is two way for if you are not clear with these concepts you need to understand my data binding demo also okay and similarly i have a text block and then i have a text box i have bound that person dot last name in it then i have a button which is called a submit button that will submit my details onto that list view so i have a list view then and i have defined that list view onto the third row of this grid okay and the first column of this grid so the list view then it has a view property view section and then inside that list view i have defined a grid view okay so this grid view is different with this grid okay this grid is for uh, arranging the uh, controls onto the ui and the grid view is the uh, the traditional grid view that displays the data for us right in rows and columns so i have a grid view inside that list view and it has a header which says first name so and then it will bind the f name property the same property in here so whatever name i will pass in here in in the text box that will be bound in here okay same goes for this 
L name and full name. So these three columns will display my grid view. Okay. And this grid view is present inside this list view. Now let's try to see what we have developed so far. So let me run this application now. And you can see I might get an exception in here. It says, let's see the details. It says cannot locate source main window sam dot saml. That's obvious. That's because we have changed the location of this main window onto that view folder, right? So generally this main window resides outside any folder. Now this main window is present inside this view folder. And for that we need to go to the app.xaml file. Now app.xaml file is responsible for the startup of this project. You can see startup URI is main window.xaml and now it's not finding this main window xaml here in this URI. So all we need to do is this. We need to have that folder name included and then provide a slash and then this main window xaml so now this will search this main window xaml inside this view folder okay and let's try to run this now and you can see my ui is developed completely so it will not work because i have not defined any commands but uh, let me have any name here random name random name right let me click on submit Nothing happens that's because I have not defined any commands right now commands I have covered in my previous lecture so you need to understand those uh, that lecture again but uh, I will be developing this command inside this view model so let's go to this person view model again and inside this person view model I will I will not add a command uh, directly I will just make a command separately just to keep our code separated right so i will have a command folder included separately okay and uh, inside this command folder i will add a class which will say as relay command now don't get confused because in my previous lecture i have defined this as a delegate command so it's nothing uh, there is no difference between relay command and delegate command uh, it's just way to terminate there are few differences between relay command and routed ui command so that i will explain you in one of my future lectures so i will just add a command called as relay command or a class called as relay command relay command now let me take, make this class as public class and let me now paste the code of this uh, relay command again in here that's because I have developed this relay command in detail in my previous lecture. So I'm not going to develop it again. I'm just going to explain you, right? So this relay command class derives from I command or it implements I command interface. And then I have defined three parameters in here. That's because in my previous lecture, I've just defined these two parameters. In this lecture, I just needed to define this can execute cage also. That's because my button will be enabling on uh, some condition so uh, you might have seen that in my uh, whenever i type anything in my text boxes then th that button gets enabled so for that we need to define the three parameters now onto the constructor of this relay command i am passing this action this func delegate which returns as bool and then i am passing this can execute cage parameter and then i am assigning these values in here in this constructor so very simple c sharp logic and this logic i have explained you in my previous lecture also then i have a can execute method defined in here it's the generalized can execute method which just checks that if it's null if it's null it returns true else it returns a can execute parameter and then comes the real part so this is a event handler can execute change the moment we implement this i command interface this event is uh, implemented right but in my previous lecture we have not used this event that's because we don't we didn't have any had any condition that time to check for now we have a condition that we will type something on onto our text boxes and then that will be uh, indeed enable our button now this can execute change has uh, a event called as requery suggested so if you put a mouse over requery suggested it it shows that it is a event and it says occurs when the command manager detects conditions that might change the ability of a command to execute so whenever i'm typing something onto my text box this requery suggested event is in turn raised 
and this will in turn raise my can execute changed interface uh, can execute changed, changed event of my command class okay so this is a very simple logic in here okay only uh, you just need to implement this require suggested event right okay and then comes the execute part so i have explained this execute part in my previous lecture also so just uh, i'm doing nothing i'm just executing the action which i have defined in here so this is the generic form of the command what i have defined now the real command will be defined onto the view model so let's go to person view model again and let me have command defined for the submit action so now since this video is becoming long i am just pasting this code here so this is my submit command it says it doesn't find this i command interface so let me have the namespace windows.input and you can see in here there are few errors in here that's because i have not use the correct namespaces i have not defined these submit execute and can execute methods so let me define these methods in here so let me paste them you can see i have my submit execute and can submit execute which i am passing in here so all this submit execute does is it adds uh, this person object onto this person's collection so where is my person's collection it's the observable collection right and then this can submit execute what what it does it checks that if the string is null or empty that means if my text box is null or empty and similarly it checks for the other text box also so it returns false if it's it's empty or else if it, it returns true so when i will type anything on those both the text boxes then only it will return true else it will return false so that will disable my button okay let me save this now and let me go to the xaml part of it and let's uh, bind this submit command onto onto our button so let me have command binding and let me give it submit command because the name of my command is submit command okay similarly we, we need to give any source to this item source right so let me give the source and let me bind my person's collection okay so what is this person's it's the collection class of this person class okay and let me now save this and run this application let's see if this application runs or not so let me try to run this and you can see my application is developed in here let me type john let me type do let me submit it you can see nothing is happening that's because my xaml is not aware that data context of this uh, view is view model or xaml does not have, is not aware that data context is view model we have just defined the key for view model but we have not applied this key anywhere so let me have this thing paste it in here so what i am doing i am just uh, to this grid i am just setting the data context to person view model and this person view model key is defined in here okay let me try to run this again so let's run this and you can see now my application runs perfectly you can see this submit button is not enabled it will get enabled only when we'll type anything here so let's john smith and let's lose the focus and here comes the submit button enables itself so john smith is added okay now this is slight problem in this application now let me delete this and the moment i press a tab you can see john is john is getting lost right and my button is disabling itself so there's some error in my application right can you guess why is why is this error that's because it's not always necessary for you to update the ui now the moment i type anything say suppose i'm typing in here virat and let me type in here kohli submit is enabled virat kohli is added right now the moment i delete this again my ui will notify the model that this has been changed so it will update itself right so this is a bug in my system 
so why is this coming that's because i am notifying through this property so there are, there are certain scenarios where we don't need to use this i notify property chain interface method right so for the model classes we don't need this i notify property chain method so let me have this gone from here similarly let me have this gone from here so the the reason why i explained you this at the last is because you just you if i would have developed this application without using this so it, there might be uh, a confusion in your mind that why i am not using i notify property chain interface since this is a base of mvvm pattern right so it de purely depends on your requirement what do you want to achieve if you want to notify your ui then it's fine you need to implement this interface if you don't need to implement uh, that means notify the ui you can skip this part so let's try to run this again now you can see let's add virat in here kohli and virat kohli is added right now let's remove this virat okay the moment i have removed my application is gone back to the original state but virat kohli has been added in here okay let me add now his friend rohit sharma and you can see rohit sharma is added now for internal uh, for um, international audience rohit sharma and virat kohli are indian cricketers so let me have uh, you can see it's just for international audience so let me add brad pitt here you can see brad pitt is in added so this whole application is developed using mvvm pattern and also i meant, uh, forgot to mention one thing that uh, in the constructor of this person view model uh, class i have initialized this person and persons right uh, this person is the person class so we have, we were using only the person uh, variables so i have initialized this person here and also this observable collection okay if we don't do so we'll get a error so let me comment it out and let's try to run this again now and let's see what happens and you can see i am getting a null reference exception and it says check to determine if the object is null before calling the method so before calling this class or entire view model my person is not initialized okay so for that you need to initialize these persons right okay so let me try to run this again now and you can see it's working fine you can see it's added right so i had a model i had a view model i had a view okay and i have a, i had a, a separate folder for commands just to make you understand so this is the normal terminology we what we follow uh, we try to separate a generic form of commands from view model okay we can define the general structure of this command into this view model also but that will confuse the audience right so generally what we do we define the generic command in a separate folder and the implementation of that command is done into the view model okay so that's it guys uh, for this lecture if you have any doubt please leave a comment below this video and thank you so much for watching this video patiently if you have any doubt please leave a comment and please do subscribe to my channel thank you so very much